Thank you so much for your kind introduction. And uh, well, once again, uh, my name is Wei Leong, and I'm really honored to be here today uh, celebrating with you the spirit of volunteerism in health and social care. And uh, maybe to introduce myself uh, briefly. Uh, well, as our MC mentioned, I'm a GP. I, I've just come from a clinic in Chinatown where I work three days a week. And as much as I love what I'm doing in Chinatown, in my own clinic, uh, you know, the other time uh, I, I spend is actually with HealthServe, uh, my other passion. And um, well, uh, instead of telling you, you know, spending a lot of time telling you what I do, I'm going to show you a little video about HealthServe. HealthServe was started about some eight years ago. Uh, with a friend of mine. A typical evening at about 7, the workers will come and they'll register. And uh, there are workers from uh, you know, Bangladesh, China and India. Uh, we offer a $5 clinic uh, for medicines, consultations and all kinds of other services. We have got doctors, nurses, pharmacists, students, housewives, and all, the whole range of people who come volunteer their time here. We take medical students for the NUS uh, selective program where we train would-be doctors, right, medical students, because they are our doctors of the future, our leaders, and introducing them to a community that you'll be serving as junior doctors or as future doctors will help them, will shape the way they treat, in their diagnosis, in their prescription, and in the way policies are made. I think the challenge really has been uh, sometimes the difficulty, the pain we feel with the migrants, the pain of a job loss, a pain of having a life that's so uncertain, a future that's bleak, uh, and they don't know what's going to happen next. And we feel powerless, we feel vulnerable with them. Running this charity has been wonderful. I mean, the people, the volunteers, the, the beneficiaries who are really connected with us, I really enjoy, and all of us here enjoy just celebrating common humanity. Uh, knowing that you and I, uh, the Bangladeshi worker or the Chinese construction worker, we all share common humanity. And that connectedness as fellow humans has made life so rich, and we love it. So this video was made in uh, 2015, so the figures have changed uh, somewhat. We have now got three medical clinics and three um, uh, dental clinics, uh, as well as uh, two welcome centres. And uh, so today, uh, when I was asked to speak about healing, uh, about uh, inspiring and bridging communities, uh, you know, this, these are essentially what's uh, put on our HealthServe uh, logo. And I've broken down today's talk into three parts, uh, and I'll be sharing some stories with you uh, from the health serve journey, right? About stories that bridge our communities, uh, and also, you know, we hope that our stories will inspire, right? And uh, in fact, the story, the first story, will be about bridging communities, and then the last one will be, will be about inspiring, inspiring communities. The first story about bridging communities uh, is also about how HealthServe started. Uh, back in 2006, a good friend of mine, Shin Yong, uh, and I became you know, thoroughly stirred up about helping um, the great influx of uh, inflow of migrant workers, which we noticed uh, were filling our midst. So over six months of uh, kaya toast and coffee, you know, we're drinking, and then uh, we discuss all these problems, you know, in the world uh, about their housing, their employment. And then one day I said, "Hey, you know, how about we start a clinic for them?" And uh, you know, and so that's what we did. Uh, well, we set up, we decided to set up a clinic, and then we thought maybe a budget of one thousand can uh, we can start something. But then we then encountered our first challenge. Right, we started a clinic, and our first challenge was actually no one came. In fact, for six months, uh, nobody came, you know. Uh, 
Uh, so we thought, okay, we better adv advertise ourselves, right? So we put up banners, uh, more banners, welcome. We went around, we gave up flyers, uh, but still no one came. All right? uh, uh, then we said, hey, something is wrong. In fact, three of our lady uh, female uh, volunteer doctors, they sat down and then we said, what went wrong? And then they broke down and cried. I said, okay. Uh, you know, they said, we thought we only wanted to help, but why is it not working? We were so disillusioned and, and, you know, we thought that, well, we must have gotten this whole volunteer thing wrong. And actually, it was uh, this eureka moment when we uh, realised that we hadn't gotten to know the community, right, that were all around in Geelang. We did not think of crossing Geelang, Geelang Road, to be on the side of the people we were going to serve. And so we thought, okay, let's cross Geylang Road. Oh, by the way, we're on the odd number lorongs, huh? some of you know, right? And then the action is on the even lorongs, right? So, so we're always on the safe side. So we thought we better cross Geylang Road. And so we did, and we came to the place where street walkers lived, the migrant workers lived, and we started talking to them, making friends, and soon we got to know this community. And we went to the side of the marginalised. And even though we realised that we were just one street away, we really had to cross, right, to the safe, get out of our safe side, and that made a huge difference. Now, once we crossed the road, right, and we crossed cultures uh, to make friends, uh, guess what? They crossed to our side, right? And, and so soon, Health Serve became that safe space for housewives, for students, for pimps, for prostitutes, for, uh, you know, for migrants, all to come together to share community. And that's how the story of bridging communities taught us that volunteerism is more than just a service. We had, enter, we had to enter their space and culture in order to invite them over to our home. And uh, now we again think of Health Serve as our home and a place where our migrant friends feel safe and happy. Now, the second story is about uh, healing communities. Uh, and there's a story told to me by one of our interns uh, uh, called Jen, right? And we have many uh, medical uh, student interns, uh, social work interns, business interns, uh, where they come, you know, to accompany our workers uh, for their visits to MOM or appointments or sometimes even court hearings. And more than that, our volunteers happily go beyond the call uh, of duty to initiate conversations, conversations and, you know, take part in relational activities uh, with our migrant friends. Uh, we often share meals together, have coffee together, and uh, you know, it is really that relational time that makes the biggest impact. So when I asked Jen, hey Jen, you know, what brings you the greatest joy, uh, you know, when you're volunteering at HealthServe? And then she, she replies, oh, you know, it's a time when I accompany the worker, right? This particular worker for his hospital visit. So in addition to um, uh, clinical volunteers, uh, right, uh, from government hospitals like, like Tantok Singh, uh, health, the Health Service Network also includes a group of uh, private practitioners and specialists who offer almost free consultation to our workers. So anyway, this worker, he was, you know, badly traumatized in his, and very anxious before he went to see this doctor. And, uh, and so Jen, our intern, accompanied him uh, to the doctor, but you know, he was just quiet, very anxious. And in, at, at, at the uh, clinic, this doctor was very kind and just talked to him and he began to relax. And then, after that appointment, Jen and this worker had lunch together. And then he began, began to open up his whole story of his pain, his struggles, about his family and about himself. And so Jen was able to connect deeply uh, at a personal level and he told her, you know, Jen, I feel very touched because you're the first Singaporean I've had lunch with. You know? And he felt that this very simple act gave him that sense of dignity and healed his heart in many ways. You know, when Jen told me this story, I was really moved because, uh, you know, what we do, doctors and nurses, you know, we can give treatment, but really, what really heals someone's heart? This I learned from Jen. And finally, perhaps this, that's the ultimate and true purpose of volunteerism, right? Touching hearts. Now, just before I um, go to a third story, here's another story, a short video about one of our volunteers called Crystal. 
And this film, uh, this is filmed by uh, MOM just a few months ago. I find joy in helping. Even a small action can make a big difference. Which is why I volunteer with HealthServe, helping migrant workers with their medical needs. I've learned that kindness can heal wounds. Words can soothe away pain. And laughter is the best medicine. Through small acts of kindness, friendships can develop. And through helping, you receive joy as well. And finally, the story about inspiring communities. Um, now, inspiring communities, this is a story about growth and vitality of volunteerism. Uh, because, you know, sustainability is paramount. And so we started asking ourselves, how can we sustain the heartbeat, the vital signs, and the pulse of health serve? Right? How do we make health serve something that's uh, sustainable, scalable, and replicable. And so two things came to mind, or two ways came to mind. What if we could all right, turn our beneficiaries, or transform them right, into volunteers, right? uh, or transform them into initiators? And what if our volunteers embodied the spirit of uh, volunteerism and started their own initiatives, uh, pretty much like the SPAA? So when volunteers become, uh, when beneficiaries become volunteers, that's when things start to change. Uh, at um, health health clinics and our events, uh, many of our beneficiaries, the migrant workers, they will be acting, helping us take uh, the BPs, right? Uh, they'll be doing translation work and registration for the people who come. So this, how this happened was one of our interns, he's actually a medical student now, uh, he did a course called the Vital Science course, very big thing, right? So what he did was he taught all the migrant workers that were with us, right? Um, so how to take a BP, what it means, all right? How to take temperature, very simple. And then we give him a nice certificate, all right? And then these workers, they're so proud of it, right? There's so much, they're so proud of this thing. And, uh, and, and with that, they are allowed to take the BP and temperature, helping us as volunteers while the patients are seeing the doctors. Also, a large number of uh, our migrant workers also help us uh, in preparing food. We don't just we don't run a soup kitchen. We actually have our beneficiaries working with us. In fact, uh, they even teach uh, our volunteers how to cook. We ran a Bengali cooking class, right? So guess who? You know, so the, we have the people we serve teach us, right? It changes. It reframes volunteerism. Recently, we had our NUS uh, group of students come to teach us a course called Learning Bengali, right? <laughs> and it was really oversubscribed. We had this uh, you know, place was much smaller, but people were queuing up, trying to go in to learn Bengali. But guess who the lecturers were? Migrant workers were the lecturers, and we were there sitting, trying to learn Bengali, right? And you know that um, this empowering of the beneficiaries really uh, is very special for us. And this type of role reversal brings deep healing, right? Uh, it bridges communities uh, to those who are, who are um, marginalized. So this is a group of uh, students who are with the patients. Yeah. Now, when beneficiaries become initiators, um, we had a Chinese worker. Uh, who went back to China. He was so moved by his time here with us. He actually started a community library uh, in his hometown, Anhui, and he even called it Health Surf Library. So anyway. And then another one, we had an Indian uh, chap. Uh, he went back, and he was so inspired, he started a little NGO of sorts with his friends, uh, helping children. And in Bangladesh, we had someone called Kauza, uh, someone who had lost uh, his 
three fingers in the accident, and he started helping um, people who who had lost uh, their own, uh, you know, who had lost uh, two limbs. Sorry, this guy helping the marginalized in Bangladesh. So, Kauza, if you notice, uh, he has a black glove in his hand, right? That's where he lost his three fingers. So when he's finished his case in Singapore, we helped him and he went back. He's now actually going around uh, in his free time helping those who are in a worse state than him. Right? And these, this is really uh, something heartwarming for us. And finally, you know, the next step we can go is when our volunteers start new initiatives. And um, take the uh, Constructing Care Collaboration, or CCC, right? Joshua, who is one of our early um, vo student volunteers, he co-founded CCC uh, to train fellow medical and nursing and uh, other students, right, to prepare them for volunteer work. And he has since graduated, now a doctor, and he still volunteers in health serve in our leadership team. And uh, CCC continues to be run by uh, other student volunteers. And I'd now like to invite Joshua, where's Joshua, come, come, to tell you more about himself, right? Thank you, Joshua. I think, you know, uh, when we have fresh initiatives, when we are able to pass on the spirit of volunteerism, that's something we want to celebrate. And so really, in conclusion, I, you know, today was just a time for us at HealthServe, at least, to share some stories, some of our experiences of what community is, the joys, and sometimes the pain of community, and yet, uh, how inspiring uh, that actually the volunteers themselves have been a blessing to us and uh, we hope that you know this journey will carry on for many of you here and as we hear some of and read about some of the initiatives that uh, we all have in this room I think it's, it will be a great uh, time ahead in the years to come so thank you so much for inviting us thank you thank you Dr. Go as well as Joshua for your sharing as well I think we've got a question from our Hello. conference room. Hi, if you could please introduce yourself, tell okay. us your name as well as your question, please. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Luai Poon. I, am, uh, I do volunteering most of the time. So, uh, I'd like to ask a question. Uh, I see today's program, but I, I, just, I just came in not, not long ago. So, uh, but I, I saw the, I read the, today's uh, program, but there is no mention of diabetes. I think this is now, the most concerned uh, topic, <laughs> medical topic, because of the PM uh, uh, speech uh, in the in the rally, and uh, and uh, I I am also uh, I mean I volunteer at PA also People Association, and we are also starting program talking about how to prevent diabetes, and uh, I'm quite surprised how come it's not in the program today. <laughs> well, maybe I can answer that question for you. Sure. <laughs> Please do. Well, you know, diabetes, uh, you know, in health serve, because we are volunteer run, so initially we said, all our volunteers, we got together and said, we will not do any chronic illness because, you know, uh, for chronic illness, really, how do you do the follow-up? I mean, if you've got diabetes, you check your renal function, or check your kidneys, sorry, you check all the other parameters. So what do you do? Or HbA1c for the doctors or nurses. So, so what do we do? So we said, no. Then one day I was in the clinic, right? And uh, this guy called Alam, right? He comes in, he say, uh, he goes to a doctor and he says, I want to see if I've got diabetes. And we said, sorry, we don't see diabetes. Uh, so he came out very dejected and then he, I happened to be standing around. He came to me and uh, he showed me his medicines and he said, sir, please help. I said, why? He said, well, I have no money. I said, okay. He said, because uh, of the system, right, because he's a foreigner as a migrant worker, his boss, he was working as a bin centre worker and his employer did not want to pay for diabetes because, hey, this is not work injury, why should I pay for you, right? That was his bosses was, were thinking that way. And so he had to pay, and he went to a polyclinic, and you know, because he's not subsidized, you know, so the bill was a huge bill, right? More than five times his uh, uh, daily wages. So he came, and when I saw the bill, I said, okay, I'll help. And you know, that was a turning point. Uh, we, we decided to help people with chronic illness, and then we had, uh, you know, because we realized that actually chronic illness is even in the migrant workers. They're not like 
all free of chronic illness, right, and only get uh, work injury. So they do have this problem. And our volunteers came up, then we did uh, our diabetic uh, uh, education, our hypertension education. And so that really sparked off. So again, the volunteers did a great job with that. All right. So that's for diabetes. Thank you very much. Maybe I can help to answer that question partially as well, uh, and also help to promote next year's program, right? Uh. Yeah. Because uh, actually that's a very, very good question. And uh, we, we did, uh, uh, the Singapore Patient Conference is not just, uh, just today, not just one day. In our community outreach uh, day on the 30th of September, there was health talks uh, by dietitians on how to manage your diabetes and also uh, physiotherapists, etc. There, there are also quite a number of uh, health talks that are conducted in the Care Connect in conjunction with the Singapore Conference. So we, we will try and make sure that the website uh, explains all these uh, additional uh, activities uh, besides just uh, what is happening today, which is a little bit more celebratory to, to, to talk more about volunteerism. Hopefully that answers your question. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think... Uh Getting volunteers, uh, I think one of the, I mean, now people are very eager to volunteer if you talk about diabetes, I think. <laughs> well, that's our uh, next topic already. We've got our theme all set up, you know, for next year. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Oh, yes. If you could please approach the microphone, introduce yourself and your question, please. Uh, afternoon, my name is Michael Loa. I have uh, one question, only a very simple question. Where do the health, health server get the funding from? Oh, well, thank you for asking. I usually tell my friends, uh, if you see me put on weight, uh, you know I need money. Uh. If you see me very slim, I'm quite okay. Uh, you see, because if health serve where we started, I had to go around with my friends, hey guys, have lunch with me. And then after that, I said, hey, we need money for this work. And then they'll give me money. So I go for so many lunches, I put on a lot of weight. And uh, but now, you know, uh, thank God that we, uh, you know, with a lot of support from our volunteers who contribute to uh, the work of HealthServe, we get, uh, you know, some matching grants from the government, uh, we get support from our foundations. So it's been a, a really encouragement for our volunteers, uh, for our beneficiaries also. And I think a lot of this has uh, come because of stories that were shared, uh, lives that were, you know, that's so intersected, really. It's a community thing. So uh, in terms of funding, yes, that's how we get our funding, yeah. Uh, from various sources now and one of the largest and by the way talking about funding one of the lessons I learned really is uh, one of the very poignant lessons a major shift for my own life was this about uh, five years ago we had this patient called Ying Sensen from China and he had lost his hearing while working in the lift shaft okay so after three months he's lost his hearing he did put on his ear earplugs properly all right and so he lost his hearing and then he was just booted out from his company all right he was found left wandering all right no, no makan, no money, no nothing. He was wandering the streets of Geylang, and the three commercial sex workers found him. And what they did was they gave him some food. But after a, a week, they said, hey, this one not sustainable. Huh? Cannot, right? So they said, hey, sir, why don't you cross over to the other side, Geylang Road? Maybe they can help you, all right? So Ying Sensen did. He came over, and we treated him. And what I did was I got all my ENT friends to see him, and uh, he said, hey, this guy needs a cochlear implant. I said, what? $40,000, you know, where to get money? And I, I went out having a few more lunches, and then someone said, okay, we'll sponsor. But in the meantime, my EAT friend said, okay, I think we'll get him a high-end hearing aid, which he did. And so Ying, so within that six months, Ying was given his hearing aid, to hear a little more, and then his case was also settled. Now, before he, so case settled, he was going to go home back to China. Now, before he went home, he had his case settled, he had some money, right, to last him for the next few years, right, from his compensation. He came around to our staff and said, I want to give this money to help sir. He said, hey, no, 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 we're helping you, I cannot. Then he went around. Then on the last two days before he left, he was so desperate. He came to me, he said, Dr. Go, uh, I want to give this token of appreciation. And it's a huge amount, okay, all right, compared to what was given, right, huge amount. I said, hello, I said, he said, you want to give this amount? I said, no. I cannot take it. I'm supposed to help you, right? And you know, you need, plus, you need this. And then he said, he looked into my eye and said, Doctor, you know, thank you so much for helping me. I'm a member of this community, right? 
if you don't take this money, you're not my brother. <laughs> so I pause, a very long pause, and I said, I'll accept your money. Thank you so much. And you know, that was a moment I felt the chains, the shackles of a patronizing NGO, right? Who think of Singapore, well, you're smart, lah. help you, you know. But that broke me and our team. We realized that actually it's harder to receive, isn't it? Volunteer quite easy, you know. We help, help, you help these poor fellows, right? And we volunteer from a platform of power, but you know, to receive is really to be able to stand in the platform, a place of vulnerability. I felt so vulnerable, but it changed my perspective of volunteering, how to receive. And now today we can receive from all our beneficiaries. <laughs>